WAP Hour Book Review slash First Impressions time. So how I'm doing this series is I'm going to give a short, very short review on the WAP books. Today, we're going to start off with The Beastman. Now, it is kind of a First Impressions review because I have not had a lot of games with The Beastman yet or in WAP in general, but there will be plenty more. And I plan on coming back to this series in about six months to a year and redoing all the books again with more, far more experience under my belt to see if I agree with myself in these videos and comment below. So, Beastman first. Eighth edition, they were, I was about to say almost unplayable, but that would have been inaccurate. I think they were unplayable. Excuse me. Terrible book in eighth edition. Points too high, rules didn't work well enough, just trash. Some changes to this book makes them go from bottom tier, like really terrible, to really, really, really good. I'm really digging the power of the Beastman in this edition, the Warhammer Armies Project. I have the digital version right off screen here, so I'll be looking this way a lot. Primal Theory, basic rule, it gives you a roundabout way hatred. Yeah, hatred is such a fantastic rule in this game. Uh, and Beastman Ambush significantly improved in this edition. Previously, it was the restrictions were so uh, strict that they were just not usable. Now you can throw anything you want with the Beastman Ambush rule in Ambush, as long as it, as long as it doesn't have a mount, and you get to roll on the Ambush in, on a plus one to your roll, basically coming on the table two plus. Really, really, really good. Really dig that rule. Very narrative to the Beastman without them being overly strong with it because you know, they're not heavily armored. Right. We got some unruly rules, which kind of more of a narrative downside, but they're not cripplingly bad. So I'm okay with that. Really dig that. We got marks officially in the book. Now marks are going to be. All right, but I'll get into more detail in a bit. I'm going to try to keep this fast though, relatively. In end times, beastmen gained marks and gained a lot of power and playability. And the Warhammer Armies Project marks are built into the book. For better or worse, I really like them. But I have some criticisms. And that's what's going to happen going forward in this series. There's going to be criticisms and things I really like of every book. And then the idea, like I said earlier, it is coming back to this in six months to see if I agree with myself. All right, the uh, Lore of the Wild was so terrible, terrible. I really dig it now. There, all of the spells have their use. Still not a huge fan of Traderkin. That's either here or there. It's a spell for some. But Savage Dominion, their big spell, the number six spell, previously they allowed a wizard to summon on a monster from a table-filled edge, but the wizard had to focus on that monster, and it couldn't cast. Um, and every time the monster took a wound, the wizard took a toughness test and took a wound in return. It is functionally almost the same. Except the spell is now an augment, so the wizard no longer has to focus on uh, not casting any spells. So this, the wizard can augment himself with Savage Dominion, summon on a big old monster, and then continue to cast for the rest of the game. Minor fix, but a major fix. Sorry, a tiny fix that is a major improvement to the way the spell works. So I love Savage Dominion. De evolve. Why do I always add an extra syllable? De evolve. Uh, it's just a great spell. The upcasted version gives you a 24 inch aura of every takes a leadership test enemy and takes every point you lose by or fail by. You take a wound with normal stays allowed. I really like that spell. It has done great work. It has done many turns of just nothing. It's going to be far more crippling to armies like Skaven, but it's a, it's a good spell and uh, Lore of the Wild is much, much improved. Really, really dig it. We had the Lore of Zinch, Lore of Nurgle, and Lore of Selenation here, because with the appropriate mark, you can have the appropriate lore. All makes sense. Uh, Gifts of Chaos and Spoils of the Hearthstone are basically your magic items. They're not that uh, expensive. It's more um, all the books don't have a whole lot of magic items. A lot of good ones, some okay ones. Typical magic item stuff. Nothing really worth pointing out there. Nothing that concerns me or wows me. And then we're going on to actual units. Okay, so I noticed some cool rules on Kazrak, which I want to try, so positive change there. But we don't talk about special characters, just kind of a, a bias I have. Special characters are a thing you kind of agree with your opponent beforehand. So let's get into the actual meat of the army, the Wargors. 
they come with shields and can take oh sorry war gorge is the hero i meant to say gores they come with shields uh ambush and primal fury makes them pretty good at eight points of model movement five weapon skill four and toughness four I would really have liked that these were able would have been able to have marks of chaos. They don't have the ability to do so. My main reason is my gore are armed with shields, and without the ability to take um, mark of zinch, it, it just it's not a sorry without the ability to take any other uh, light armor or anything. It's just not a good loadout, and I'm really disappointed that mine are a mark or sorry mine have shields and nothing else a double hand weapon or two hand weapons appropriately called is still the best choice now that's just a minor criticism it's more of a mistake on my part not less than a criticism on the book i just would have loved um maybe a light armor option but again that just goes that's probably more wishful thinking or or, or uh just wanting something i don't deserve the models don't have armor it doesn't make sense so yeah it makes sense the, bo the, the bonuses to shield in the Warhammer Armies project is pretty big anyway. And I've already learned that if I have a bunch of characters in my block of gore, I'm better off having shields on them than two hand weapons. Because you only get the one attack from the second rank anyway. And if I have a bunch of characters in the front, the characters are going to do the fighting and you don't care about the extra attack. And the shields keep them alive a little bit longer from arrows getting shot at them. So um, I just wish that the gores could have had a mark. That's it. Uh, Ungor, Ungor Warriors, nothing to talk about. Mutants are in the thing. The Tusk Four Chariots, I, I'm loving them. Warhounds, no complaints. Best of Wars. Now, here's the first time we're going to uh, talk about marks in this book. So, once again, Nurgle wins. <laughs> so, your Mark of Zinch gives you a six of ward save. Fantastic, because it's War Warhammer Army's project. It stacks with things. Stacks with shields like parry. Other war saves you can give a unit, maybe even just like the Iron Curse icon, six of war saves against the war machines. I'm assuming that's still a thing. So Mark of Zinch is pretty good. All the marks are two points of model on a best of Mark of Celeste gives you Stubborn and Immune to Psychology, two fantastic abilities. Like, two points. Mark of Corn gives you Frenzy. Fantastic. Mark of Nurgle just wins as always. It's minus two initiative, but plus one toughness. All four of them are quite good. All four of them are usable. The other three just, in my opinion, kind of fall behind the plus one toughness being just so good. Having, because they're toughness four base infantry, having toughness five infantry running around uh, for two points, you can have either Frenzy, Stubborn, a ward save of six plus, or plus one toughness. And th that plus one toughness just, just seems to be the auto pick. That's my only criticism about these uh, marks. Uh, Minotaurs have the exact same issue. You don't need the mark of corn on them. Uh, stubborn and immune psychology on the mentors, not bad, not bad for six points a model. Getting a six of ward save, six points a model, a little expensive. Get a shield in there, get a five of parry on your on your minotaurs. Wait, can you even parry if you're frenzy in this edition? Oh boy. Um, but Mark of Nurgle, six points a model, plus one toughness, going toughness four, toughness five is just gonna win every time. So, um, Mark's, Mark's cool, Mark of Nurgle. Just wins out every time. Razor is still good. Spawn. Great. Spawn get cool marks and get special abilities by your marks. All your monsters are still here. Your dragon ogres are in this book. The Shagoth is in this book. Uh, Jabber Slide, fantastic. Giants, Hector, you do models. I have one question. What model are you supposed to use for the ram horn? That's my only question. So the Ramhorn is a new model, one of a couple in this book, but Ramhorn the Hagdry. I have no idea what it's supposed to be meant to do as the Ramhorn. But that's it. That's all the units. The first impressions kind of semi review at the end here. They play, they move fast, they play well, they use many of the rules, except they don't do a whole lot of shooting. Which is okay. It's not really meant to be their thing. They ambush and surround. And when you're able to quickly ambush, you don't want to have a whole army of shooting. And one doesn't really work with the other. I mean, it can. But yeah, no, I dig it. I, I, I think in this, with my limited experience with Beastmen, a solid quality potential 
if I'm going to put it top, mid, bottom tier, I have no idea where I'm going to put these books. I feel like I want to put them all in top tier. But I can comfortably say I'm feeling this Beastman book top tier. So going forward, I'm going to rate them, rate the next book compared to the previous book. So the next book I do, which I'll probably end up putting out very, very, very shortly, will be, is it stronger, weaker, or as strong as the Beastman book? And I think the Beastman, really good. Love the playstyle, love the book. This one was an aces for me. This, this book was a huge hit for me from a completely terribly unplayable 8th edition book. Army. Eighth edition, unplayable 8th edition army to a very fantastic one. Whew. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for plenty more of the Warhammer Army's project. First impressions slash reviews coming up very shortly.